Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to be talking about exponential growth. If you are in Ms. Drake's class, you should be following along in your unit packet. So first we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. So the difference is in exponential growth, the original amount increases or gets bigger by the same percent over a period of time. And in exponential decay, the original amount decreases or gets smaller by the same percent over a period of time. So there's a general formula we could use for both growth or decay, and this is the formula right here. They're both increasing or decreasing by a constant percent, and here's your formula. This A of T, a lot of times I'll write this as Y equals instead. If you remember from the beginning of the year, Y equals or F of X equals means the same thing. So this is going to be your final amount, usually your answer. So this is usually what we're looking for, and these are the values you plug in for. So A is the initial amount, or whatever number they give you to start. Then we have a set of parentheses, and 1 represents 100% of the original amount, and then either plus or minus. So you'll decide whether you need to use a plus or minus based on whether it's a growth question, you'll use a plus, or a decay question, you'll use a minus sign. And then R represents the rate of increase or decrease, and we always represent that as a decimal. So they'll usually give it to you as a percent, and you have to convert it to a decimal, and we'll talk about that over here. And then you close the parentheses, and there's an exponent of T, which is the amount of time. So this is considered an exponential function because we have an exponent that's a variable. Okay, so in the formula, 1 plus R is what we use when it's growth, and then 1 minus r is what we use when it's decay. So you have to decide whether it's going to be a plus or minus. In order to plug into the formula, we need to be able to convert percents to decimals. So you learned this in 6th and 7th grade, so just as a little reminder, you have two options. You can either divide the percent by 100, or you can move the decimal two places to the left. So there's just a few examples here for you. If you're given 75%, you would take the decimal that's here and move it one, two places, and it becomes 0.75. So you would use 0.75 in the formula. If you have 60%, you would move the decimal one, two places, and it becomes 0.6, you can drop the zero. If you have something like 5%, uh, you would move the decimal two places, one, two, but there's nothing here, so you have to add a zero as a placeholder, and it becomes 0.05. If you're given a percent that is a decimal, you still move it two places over, one, two, and you would have 0 0.093. Okay, and then lastly, 48.2%, you would move your decimal one, two places, and you have 0.482. Okay, let's turn the page, and we will actually try one of the examples. Okay, so it looks like the first thing we're doing is just going back over the formula. This one's just for growth. So if you look at the formula, it just has a plus sign, not a plus and a minus sign. So we're going to fill in the blanks with the meaning of each variable in the exponential growth formula. Okay. So the y is the final amount. The a is the initial amount. The r is the rate of increase. Remember, we're going to write that as a decimal. I'll write that as a decimal. And t stands for so let's look at our first example. Maya opened a money market account with $5,000, which earns 3% interest. Let's highlight that important information. So we have $5,000. It earns 3% interest compounded annually. So that means each year. If she does not deposit or withdraw any money, so that means she doesn't put any money in or take any money out over the course of the year, how much money will she have in the account after five years? Okay, so I just highlighted the three numbers, basically, that they gave me. So I'm doing that because my first step is to identify my y, my a, my r, and my t, so the variables that are in the formula. So y, the final amount, is usually what we're looking for. That's my question mark. So when I fill in the formula, the y would stay as a y. a is the initial amount. So how much does she start with? She starts with $5,000. r is the rate. So the rate is 3% interest. So we have to take that 3%, write it right here, and we have to change it to a decimal. So right here is my invisible decimal. I'm going to move that over two places to the left, one, two, 
and it goes here. Because I have an empty scoop, I'm going to put in a zero. So I have 0 0.03, and then t is the amount of time, which is five years. So once you identify your values, you're going to plug them into the formula. So since y is my question mark, I'm going to write y equals a is 5,000, so 5,000, parentheses, 1, plus 0 0.03, and then to the t power, so to the fifth power. So now you have two options from here. Sometimes on a multiple choice question, they want you to simplify by adding what's in the parentheses. So I'm going to do that as the next step. But if they're just asking for a numerical answer, you really could just plug this exactly as you see it into your calculator. So I'm going to simplify just so you see what it looks like, and then I'll show you what to do on the calculator. So to simplify, I'm going to evaluate the parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.03 is 1.03 to the fifth power. Okay. And here I am evaluating, so I'm just going to put this into my calculator. Okay. So on your graphing calculator, or you could use Desmos if you don't have one of these at home, you'll type 5,000, parentheses, 1.03, close your parentheses, and then your caret for your exponent to the fifth power, and you press equals. Now I'm going to copy the whole thing down, 5796.37. 0372. Now, it says to round if necessary. A lot of times they won't tell you what to round to because we're talking about money. So anytime we're talking about money, you want to round to the nearest hundredth. So that's this place value right here, two places after your decimal. So the rule is, look to the right, five or more, raise the score, four or less, give it a rest. It's four or less, so I'm going to rest this as a seven. So my final answer would be five, seven, nine, six. 0.37. So that's $5,796.37. So remember, she started with 5000 and this is the amount that she has. So the 5000 was the money she started with, and the 796.37 is the amount of interest that she made. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, the Ebola virus has an infection rate of 11% per day as compared to the SARS virus, which has a rate of 4% per day. If there were 10 cases of Ebola and 10 cases of SARS initially reported to authorities and cases are reported every day, how many cases of each virus would there be on the 10th day? Okay, so I'm comparing two different growths. So let me write Ebola over here and I'll do SARS over here. Okay. And I'm going to rewrite my formula. Y equals A parentheses 1 plus R t, and I'll write it over here as well, y equals a parentheses 1 plus r to the t. Okay, so I need to fill in my variables. So let's look at the information on Ebola. Let's see, infection rate of 11% per day, so that is my r value, okay, but I have to change it to a decimal. So let's take my decimal and move it over two places to the left, so my r is 0.11. Let's see, the next piece of information is about the SARS virus, which is 4% per day. So I'll put that over here. R equals 4%, but I have to change it to a decimal, so move it over one, two places, so 0 0.04. Okay, let's see. So there were 10 cases of Ebola. That's my initial amount. So for Ebola, that would be my A. And there were 10 cases of SARS, so that's my A for this one as well. It wants to know how many cases of each virus would there be on the 10th day. So that's going to be my T, 10, for both of these. Okay. So we're going to plug our values into the formulas to kind of compare the growth rates. So pause the video, plug your, your values in, and put it to your calculator, and then press play, and we'll go over it. Okay. So for this one, we should do Y equals A is 10 parentheses, 1 is always a 1, plus r, so you should have plugged in 0.11, to the t power, so to the 10th power. Okay, so then you go to your calculator, you plug in 10 parentheses, 1 plus 0.11, to the 10th power, and we get this decimal, 1.0. 
y equals 28.3942-0986. Now, they don't tell me what to round to, but if we're recording the number of cases, it would make sense to round this to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to round this to 28 cases, right? Because after the decimal, I have a number less than, or four or less. Okay, so for Ebola, there were 28 cases after 10 days. Now let's check this one. Okay, let's plug in our values. So y equals a is 10. 1 is always a 1. r for this one would be 0 0.04. And t is 10. So what I didn't do over here was simplify. Notice I actually put it right in my calculator with the plus sign. So you could simplify and then put it in the calculator, or you could just put it straight in. So this one I'll simplify. 1 plus 0 0.04 to the 10. Oh, and I didn't even simplify it. Let's try that again. 1.04 to the 10. And I'll get the same answer whichever way I plug it into the calculator. So 10, parentheses, 1.04 to the 10th power. And I get 14.8024425. And I'll round that to, let's see, after my decimal, I have a number 5 or more. So we'll round that to 15 cases. So they both started with 10, but notice this one had a greater rate of infection than this one. So after 10 days, this one had 28 cases, and this one had 15. So let's turn the page. Let's try one more. Okay. I'm going to say pause the video. I'm going to pause and put the answers up, and then you can check back in a second. Okay, for this example, at first they just asked for a function. So I filled out my y, a, r, and t. So for y, they want me to use a of t. The initial value was 5,000. r was 0 0.12. And they don't give me amount of time yet, so I left it as a t. So here they just want the equation. And then I fill in my values when you turn 17. So I turned that t into a 17. Then I just plugged it into my calculator, and I got this value. I originally got this, and then when I rounded, I got this one. Okay, the challenge says, how much more would it be worth when he turns 32? So I then changed the 17, or the T, to 32, and I got this amount. Okay. If they want to know how much more, I need to subtract my two values from the two answers, and I get this amount. It asks to the nearest dollar, so then you draw to the nearest dollar, and the answer should be 1,200. So try the rest of the independent practice problems and complete your homework and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.